There's a wallaby down there. There's a wallaby. It's down there. Hope he's okay. Yeah, morning guys. We're down south. A bit of an impromptu trip, actually. Which had me thinking. I'm, I'm on the bike today, and I was hoping to bring you with me. But a lot of the questions I've been getting, uh, really around the festive stuff, and I realised this, that a lot of the people watching this really aren't in Australia. The big issue, the big talking point has been the fires. So I, I wanted to... Well, to kind of explain a little bit what's been going on, uh, we are in an area that has been kind of, look, I'll get to that. But um, yeah, look, a couple of other things I want to talk about, but look, guys, it is a, a thankfully nice cloudy day today. Uh, I'm going to jump on the bike. We're going to head back into Kangaroo Valley. I'll explain it all. This is the worst intro ever. Kangaroos, flies, let's do it. So I want to stress this straight off the bat. Like I'm not putting, going to put myself in danger, like in some sort of bizarre, weird, like voyeuristic, let's get close to the fires and looks at the destruction. Not going to do that just because that's douchebag behavior. And we're just going to skirt the edges, guys. And well, really gives me hopefully a chance to talk about some of the cool things people are doing to raise funds for all these people who've been affected. Alrighty, so just to sort of set the scene in terms of where we are, for, for those of you that follow the vlog a little bit, you know that we're down this way a, a, a bit. Uh, which, where are we? We're in Berry, which is uh, two and a bit hours south of Sydney, like directly south of Sydney on the, on the coast down here. A lot of the f fire stuff that you've seen, look, the fires are everywhere. Like, it, the fire that I was talking about when I was riding north of Sydney and one of the festive vlogs, that's still burning. Like, it, they're all still burning. But a lot of the de really destructive stuff that you've seen in the last two weeks have been essentially two fires in New South Wales. One further south, about another hour and a half south, down around Batemans Bay. And another one is, well, the direction that I'm gonna head today, back up towards where our team camp was. Like, so we did a big 200K day uh, on the second day of the camp. And the fire roared through that part of the state. Now, I'm not going to get that far. So the route today, guys, uh, I'm just starting just outside of Berry, and currently climbing up Woodhill Mountain Road, which will take me into Kangaroo Valley, uh, the eastern end of Kangaroo Valley. I'll drop down into the valley, head west, ride along the valley, and then out towards Barangary, Fitzroy Falls, where we did that kind of smash the other week. Uh, which essentially it's not in that particular area anymore, but is where that Exeter Bundanoon fire, well, is still burning, I might add. This is like, it's the first time I've been down here for yonks, actually. Uh, here's a quick challenge for you. We shot a vlog right here, an info vlog, right on this bit of wall right there. Extra points for anyone who can name that vlog. Yeah, but it is just incredible. Like, even coming into where we are, there's a floodway, which normally always, always has water coming in under over it. Bone dry, bone dry. And what's also really strange is, this is hard to uh, describe, but like, I've seen a lot more wildlife here since being down here this time. And you can kind of sense that it's, well, it's because they're almost running from something. I have to say this, <laughs> how good are 32s? I would never be able to talk to you ever once <laughs> up Woodhill Mountain Road. That's right, I'm on Woodhill Mountain Road. And for those of you who know this area, it's about 17%. So I'm able to just kick it in the 32, what are we doing? 250 watts. Having a chat. It is a steep road. It is a very steep road. How are you? Yeah, mate. Where are you headed? Oh, headed a loop. Yeah. I did it yesterday. It's uh, it's a little bit of debris around Berry Mountain, but apart from that, fine. Huh? Baron Gary, just to, if it's open, we're going to Baron Gary. Nice one. First time I saw you, I knew all the time. It was something. 
Yeah, so guys, like the biggest thing people have been asking is like, are we okay? And well, the answer is very much yes. Uh, you know, the fires have not demolished metropolitan Sydney. I mean, the crazy thing is the biggest impact we've had has just been our ability to ride bikes, which is pathetic, I know. But look, I have to say that. But what is so cool, guys, is how the cycling community has come together uh, to try and raise some money. And there's a couple of things I do want to talk about. I know Rafa are being putting some funding options together around Tour Down Under, raffling off some paraphernalia and also an experience. I'm not sure they've released it yet, but keep an eye on their socials about what they're doing there. Down to things like Manly Cycling Club in Sydney, organizing, really wish it was today. I'm really sorry I'm not there. Had to come down here, but Today they organised a, a relief ride with Lockie Morton was there. I know uh, Cyclist Magazine are doing some stuff around giving back prize money for races and trying to match funding. Like wherever you turn at the moment, you're just hearing really cool stories. Again, I'll put the links below because it's just super cool to hear. And I just do also want to clarify just about the donations and stuff. One of the things I struggle with in these situations is knowing who to donate to where you know the money is going to the right place. As I mentioned before, like Elizabeth follows a lot of the Chris Hemsworth stuff around the center app. Uh, they have done a serious amount of research about where the best funding goes. Uh, so head on over to my mate, my mate Chris Hemsworth's social media. I'll, I'll tell him you're coming, all right? But they've done a good bit of research about where the best uh, bang for your buck is donation wise. Uh, Red Cross, I know, is one of them, so head on over to their socials if, and that's what we've done, if you're that way inclined. Now, I, I've just dropped down into the valley, and what's noticeable straight off the bat is the humidity from the coast side is kind of gone a bit, which I reckon humidity over around Berry was like up around 70 80 percent whereas it's still cloudy here but like i reckon we're down to 40 percent i know what you're thinking how is it physically possible for me to be riding on gravel without disc brakes i know i know it's like i'm pretty much superhuman just incredible bike handler. <laughs> Actually, no, I did want to say that. So, bike handling. It's only when I come down here, I really get actually the sense. And I always forget just how important driving that outside foot is. And, okay, so what I mean by that is, you know, we've all heard it, right? The, you know, you put the outside foot out and you put the weight through it. But I can always get myself, well, a lot of the time, it's amazing how much you can get yourself out of trouble by just putting more weight through that outside foot and essentially carving a ski turn. Uh, something to think about, like, instead of grabbing that little bit of brake, just driving a bit more weight through there. One-handed, one-handed, no disc brakes. I am amazing. Speaking of the grass, I just want to quickly show you this, guys. I feel like someone on Gardening Australia, but it's probably worth doing. So, there is a reason this stuff goes up so quickly. Like, it's just, it's like paper. It's it's just incredible how flaky, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, it's like kindling, really. So you can totally see why it's just shooting up. Guys, Look, I'm going to ride up Barangari, which I, you might find this interesting, okay? And I'm speaking of the training thing, right? So I'm going to ride up at, at well, hopefully, Threshold, okay? So 
this is the climb that I dry humped my bike a couple of weeks ago. So I, I'm first time I've been up it since. Got a few bad memories, obviously. But yeah, I'd be kind of interested to see if I can just maintain a good solid threshold power up here and how that compares to that horrendous performance a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, won't be much vlogging up this. It'll be a bit snot, I imagine. Uh, let's get it underway. Yeah, so what they're doing is they're kind of bringing groups of cars up the hill from this point on. So I'm not going to get in the way of that. Uh, that's a good Strava excuse, isn't it? Bushfires, bushfire roadblock. Got 20 minutes in, so I'm happy with that. Um, and the humidity is higher than I initially said. All right, let's go down the hill. So guys, effectively what I'm doing at the moment is riding through Kangaroo Valley. Now back up to my, my right there, back up the valley west. And that's where that fire that they're really scared about, which hit Thunder Noon and Exeter and those sort of areas, they're worried that if a westerly sparks up, it'll come roaring down the valley and across this road and the Kangaroo Valley River. And you can see there behind me, that stuff will just go up. So that, that's the, the last remaining concern at this end. And look at that grass. Like, I'm sure you've seen some of the pictures on TV. It's interesting just getting back into a bit of training. How inconsistent the efforts are. Like some efforts, you're almost bombing and you're like, wow, I'm back. And then the next one is just terrible. A lot of it's mental though. It's like getting used to that, getting used to that pain again. Do you know what I mean? Now I realize We've been a bit heavy today, guys. I'm aware of that. Heavy subjects. So I thought, let's do a little bit of fluff, all right? I'm back riding and training with gloves on. And there's a reason, right? I found with the campy hoods, the way they mold to you, and they mold to your hands, right? And you literally are in that position the whole time. You don't move them around. I think I discussed this with you before. But now that the humidity's back up, they get slippy. Because that rubber is so moldy, like not moldy is in like gross, but moldy is in like soft that it molds to your hands. It actually is quite kind of slippy when you're out of the saddle. So cue the gloves and uh, we are locked in position. There's some fluff for you. So like that. So what is the go with washing them? Do you wash them like after literally every ride? Uh, is it like a washing machine wash? Is it just like, do I shower with? Like, do, do, what's the go here? Uh, what's the consensus? Because, okay, let, let's, let's not beat around the bush. I think it might have a little bit of sweat on them. Maybe a little bit of snot on them. There's a chance that might happen. By all accounts, the manly ride with Lockie Morton was a massive, massive uh, success. So if you head over to the manly website or the Facebook page at the moment, they've got links to donation options there. Now, there's another really interesting one going on. So a guy called Lockie Hand, who's just been messaging me on Instagram. So get this, right? He, he, he's going to do he's going to do 200 kilometres around Centennial Park on 
the 19th of January uh, with the aim of raising money again for the Bushfire Relief Fund. So his uh, Instagram is some kind of blue. He's got a GoFundMe page. I'll put the link below as well. Check him out. Yeah, look, again, I, I realise this was a bit of a, a sort of almost heavy one. Uh, Saturday is going to be the, the serious D-Day down here, so that's when the temperatures are going to go back up, the westerlies are going to fly in, and like I was saying, that one fire um, that's that's out the sort of Bundanoon area, that's the worry is, I think it's called the Morton fire at the moment, so it's, it's a slight worry about coming down this way. And guys, I really do want to have a chat to Jay. I'm going to get up to see him tomorrow. I need to get him some bits and pieces before Nationals, which is this weekend. But I really want to talk to him about his training that he's done around Nationals and the smoke that they had in Canberra. Now, look, again, this comes from the privileged position of being in a position where we haven't lost our house or we're not dealing with direct issues from fire. But you guys might be interested in what he has done to really train for the biggest race in the country indoors. So we'll, we'll get on to that tomorrow. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. The links will be all below for the stuff that we've talked about. Uh, until very, very soon. See you soon.